Welcome to Company Showcase, an advertising feature on HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. I'm speaking with Larry Ray, CEO and President of American Manganese. Welcome back to the show, Larry. Well, thanks, Jim. Larry, with the price of gasoline in Vancouver hitting $2 a liter, uh, well over $7 a, a gallon if we're buying U.S. gallons, uh, that must make chat about electric cars and the recycling of their batteries a hot topic these days. Oh, for sure. sure. I mean, if you, uh, if you can drive a, uh, an EV car like a Tesla, um, you know, you're saving a lot of money on gas. It's just goes without saying it's only going to go higher and uh it's uh certainly uh three staff in here have teslas so they're saving money and uh aside from me but uh that's that's okay you know i usually use my car for work and that's about it so uh what once a week you fill it up used to be uh 45 dollars now it's uh 90 so what can I say? And uh, but anyway, that'll help push the sales of EV cars, which is the fastest growing uh, industry out there. And uh, certainly, uh, again, I got to take my hat off to Elon Musk. As far as I'm concerned, he pioneered that, went through the tough times, and now he's uh, up there enjoying the good times, and uh, so he should. So it's kind of like uh, recycling. When you're recycling, you uh, you want to have patents on the uh, technology that you're going to be using, and you want to have those pa- patents uh, fairly widespread. And that's exactly what we've done. We've focused on uh, on the me- metallurgical side of it. And uh, just to back up a little bit on that, a lot of people are doing black mass. Uh, including the OEMs, and uh, our tech, our technology allows us to take any black mass and uh, to work it into a cat- cathode precursor, so or and the lithium. Right. So, you know, that's R and D. That's what R and D does for you. I just received an email this morning that says, "All we do is R and D. Why aren't we moving ahead?" Well, I guess. Building the uh, re, uh, demonstration plant and getting it going is not moving ahead, and uh, according to him. So, uh, what can I say? I mean, if you want to check out on the competition, go ahead. You know, everything's out there. There's an internet. You can look up patents. You can do all kinds of things. And uh, but don't phone me up expecting me to do the, uh, your homework for you because I don't want to go down those rabbit holes. I want to stay focused on what we're doing and focus is uh, where we got today. We're not very far away. We'll probably have the first production of any North American company, and uh, that will be, and that's from the metallurgical side of it. So uh, that's a big feather in our cap, and that's coming down the pike. So... Uh, what can I say, Jim? It's uh, it's a uh, competitive world out there. There's lots of companies claiming the, that they're going to build a recycling plant, a metallurgical plant, although they got nothing that uh, says that they've done the work to uh, design that plant. And uh, we're getting a lot of NDAs from big multinational companies, and they're starting to see the value. And what we're doing. So, uh, you know, you got to be patient. You can't be pushed by somebody trying to get you off center, have you running around, you know, going down rabbit holes, checking out the competition. Competition will do what the competition does. And uh, so you just, you know, keep your head down, your ass up, and uh, you keep working on uh, developing a product at the end of the day that satisfies everything. People seem to forget that uh, we have a closed circuit, and uh, so there's no nothing getting back into the environment, and uh, that's where we want to be. So, uh, you know, we've developed that some time ago. But we've made significant improvements on our technologies, 
as I just told you about the black mass, working with black mass, we worked with about a dozen of it, dozen different companies, black mass, and uh, we were able to uh, handle that with all their impurities and contaminants that are in that black mass. We were able to work our way around that and come up with a good cathode material at the end of the day. So uh, I think we're doing the right steps. You know, we've uh, maybe we uh, didn't get into the black mass market. Might have had a bump in the stock up to over a buck or something like that. But we'd be facing losses right now. And the company's well financed to get through this difficult time. You know, we've got the things that influence the market that we didn't have three months ago. It was two months ago or one month ago, you know, like uh, Russia, uh, the you know, basically that is uh, disturbing the markets. It really is. Gold's up. Commodities are up. You look at nickel. It's up to over $13 a pound now, which is getting pretty close to $30 a uh, kilogram. So, uh, you know, commodities are doing very well. And... Uh, there's a fear there's going to be in short supply, especially nickel, especially lithium and cobalt. But uh, that's, that's a temporary influx in the market. You have to remember that uh, when you're doing deals out there, that you have to work with the uh, company that's going to be supplying you with the material and getting it back or buying it back. And uh, you're not going to be looking at those high prices. So uh, you've got to make sure your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. And then you move on from there, Jim. It's, uh, what can I say? It's, uh, you know, really, you know, it's a, it's a matter of uh, tedious work. It's a matter of getting it done right. And it's a matter of having the right partners to do it. And uh, so it's... Uh, you know, we're moving moving along with that. My voice sounds a little shaky. It's, uh, you know, one of the last things coming back with after you've had pneumonia. You do have some, lose some lung capacity. And uh, so it's, uh, I apologize for that. But the uh, main thing is I'm very enthusiastic for what's happening out there. And uh, I think that we are, on, you know, we're really on the right track. I think a lot of companies are beginning to recognize that. And, um, you know, we're being romanced by different uh, groups that want to finance the company. But let's not, let's not get our horses in front of the uh, car, uh, behind the cart. Let's get them in front of the cart. So we've got to know exactly what's happening. And uh, I've included in this, uh, in this, public, in this uh, podcast that, uh, you know, a half a dozen different write-ups on short selling. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about it. People can go to those articles and see them. Just click on the uh, links, and uh, you'll see that uh, just a deluge of them came out this week. And uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's one of the things that people like to hear is what's happening with the, uh, with the demonstration plant. Well, we're doing the water testing right now. That's all I can really say. Hopefully we'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, show the full operation of it here soon and uh, put that out in a video so that uh, people can see how the plant is working. And it's not a small plant. I mean, this is uh, not like the pilot plant, which was quite contained and quite small. This is more of a uh, spread out plant, like a normal operation. And, uh, you know, because we're going to be doing a, a lot of a lot of material through there, and uh, so it's. Uh, and again, I'm hoping that we can uh, bring it down so that we can actually resell the product at a gain. And uh, but that's that's a guess on my part. So uh, it's uh, I you know I think everybody's enthusiastic about that, but uh, until you do it, you can't really say that you can do it. But uh, it would be nice feather in our cap again to have the first production from a uh, from a plant that actually makes money. So uh, that would be that would be a fantastic way to go. And uh, we'll have uh, we'll have an update on our uh, on our 
projects up at uh, Roche de Boule sometime next week. And uh, and our permitting, uh, you know, we're working to get the permits done. So uh, it's just a uh, it's it's just an ongoing uh, situation where you you gotta you have to keep on top of everything to make it happen. And uh, being on top of it, you got to be on top of everybody on the line, so that you've got the right people in the right places that are pushing these products through, projects through, and. Uh, that's one thing I've learned as a 40-year veteran of CEO as a public company, as a CEO of a public company, that you have to uh, you have to have the right people doing the doing the job. If you got the wrong person in there, whew, that can uh, really blow up in your face. So uh, we try to keep away from that, and uh, we try to keep the progress going. You know, sure, it's taken us a lot of time for R and D, but we've got a lot of patents out there. And that means uh, that uh, the reality is that we've been successful in the work that we've done. And, uh, you know, people shouldn't be complaining about that. It's, uh, if they are, you know, are they trying to get me to run down rabbit holes? What's their agenda? I don't know. And, uh, but that's not going to happen. And, uh, you know, I'm not here to evaluate everybody's project. Um, you know, usually a uh, quick phone call with Cometco. And uh, and checking out some patents once in a while uh, gives me a pretty steady feeling that we're in the we're way ahead of everybody else. So uh, that's that's all I can say about that, Jim. It's uh, coming up to the weekend again, and uh, I wish everybody a great weekend. And uh, I hope that uh, everybody stays healthy and safe. So uh, I'm gonna. Sign her off for now. Larry, before we go, could you just give us a, a little idea about what American Manganese is all about for people who may not know about the company? American Manganese, which is soon to be uh, have a name change to Recyclical, is uh, a company that got involved in uh, manganese back in 2008, and we developed a process uh, over a four-year period, uh, actually a process over a three-year period, and followed up by feasibility studies to uh, bring low grades of manganese into production in the U.S. And uh, to say I'm disappointed about, uh, you know, not renewing the contract with the uh, DLA would be an understatement. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something that the U.S. needs. And, uh, you know, we're trying to find out just exactly what numbers they are working with, et cetera, et cetera that they didn't want to proceed with this thing because that, uh, in our point of view, uh, doesn't make sense. And uh, so, anyway, that's uh, that's uh, where our roots are. We took the, uh, the cornerstone of our battery recycling from the patented process we have on manganese. And uh, now we have several patents in several countries, and uh, those patents uh, will pay off for the company in the future. I know that people now they like to say, "Well, patents are no good to me. How do you police a patent and all that?" Well, it, you know, policing a patent is not that bad if somebody's out there producing uh, the sim similar results to you. Then uh, you know, quick look at the uh, at the operation will tell us if they're using our uh, our uh, patented process. So uh, you know, patents are the only thing that protect you. The only thing that really protects you, and uh, you know, if a company is, for example, wants to go into patent infringement, then uh, they have stand a chance of losing their total investment, the fine, with everything else, and uh, that, that can happen, and it has happened in the past. So uh, it's uh, you know, it's something that we uh, we plan to uh, police and enforce. And, uh, you know, it won't be that difficult. Uh, you know, there's going to be a few co uh, companies out there that uh, will be starting up their own metallurgical process. And uh, we'll be keeping an eye on all that. It's, uh, it's not that, uh, you know, they'll be using peroxides or solvents or whatever, um, you know, which is, does not infringe on our patents. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, but it's not, it's, uh, it doesn't get the same results. So uh, 
that's the that's where you can uh, you know look at the history of the company, look at the history of the board of directors, and look at the history of the management, and you can see that uh, you know that we've moved in the right area at the right time, and the timing seems to be perfect. So uh, it's not like uh, we're racing to the finish line here. You know, we didn't get involved in uh, in producing black mass. Because as I told you, we can uh, adapt the uh, black mass wherever it comes from, whatever impurities it has, whatever it has in it, we can adapt that to uh, actually producing, you know, top-notch cathode materials or cathode precursors. So uh, that's uh, that's what I got to say about that. You can find out everything that we've done is uh, in press releases and everything that's on our site. And... Uh, it's uh, AmericanManganeseInc.com. If you want to talk, you talk to somebody here, you can phone me at uh, 778-574-4444, or you can email me at L-R-E-A-U-G-H at A-M-Y-M-N.com. And if you want to follow our stock activity, you can uh, you can follow it on the Toronto Venture Exchange under the symbol A-M-Y. You can follow it on the QB board under the symbol AMYZF, or you can uh, follow it in, uh, in Europe under the uh, Frankfurt symbol 2AM. Larry, thank you so much for the update. You're welcome, Jim. We've been speaking with Larry Ray, CEO and President of American Manganese. I'm Jim Goddard. Our conversation took place on March 4th. Comments made on Company Showcase are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at HowStreet.com. Company Showcase is a production of How Street Media Incorporated. 